Hi there. Shane here with an interoperability parable for you. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Over many years, Old MacDonald's farm had continued to grow. He had sheep, goats, cows, pigs, chickens, ducks, geese. At least he thought he had geese, but he wouldn't want to stake his life on it. A horse, a dog, a cat, and maybe some other critters too. Old MacDonald was a pretty good farmer. He had many customers. His loyal customers kept coming to him, asking for more and more articles of produce that they wanted him to supply. But in order to keep his farm running smoothly, he needed the sheepdog to know what the sheep were doing, and vice versa. He needed the pigs to be able to talk to the goats, the chickens and the ducks had to be organised, uh, the horse had to be fed, the cows had to be milked. The farm was so complex that he felt it was in a permanent state of chaos. The bills were spiralling, he had to buy loads of feed, cart away tons of manure, buy straw, get animals to the market, and lots and lots of other things too. E-I-E-I-O-M-G. He was doing a great job and just about keeping his head above the water, but there were customer complaints, the goats kept getting out, he didn't feel very happy. One day, his main sheep supplier, Mr. Shearspeck, turned up and said, Old MacDonald, I have a solution for you. I can train your sheep how to speak goat in a week and that'll solve your goat sheep problem. Awesome, said Old MacDonald. If you can do that, it will definitely make my life a lot easier. If you sort out the sheep goat issue, everything else will be a piece of cake. So Mr. Shearspeck asked Old MacDonald for a lot of money. They spat, shook on it, and the deal was done. So Mr. Shearspeck set to work on the sheep, and before long, although a bit longer than a week, the sheep could speak a bit of goat, and that was fantastic. They could now go to work out on grazing systems in the big field, and that worked out very well for both of them, both the sheep and the goats, and made them a bit happier. There was a problem though. The goats couldn't speak sheep very well, and there were certain nuances of goat speech that the sheep couldn't quite grasp, so every now and again there was a bit of butting of horns, which Old MacDonald had to sort out. But it was a reasonable start. All seemed well for a few days until it became clear that the cows were experiencing some significant difficulties with this new grazing arrangement between the sheep and the goats. Old MacDonald contacted Mr. Uddersworth, the cow whisperer, TM, to see what could be done. Mr. Uddersworth said, ah, what you need is a mechanism for the goats to communicate with the cows. I have a contact for the goats, Mr. Beardsmore, and we will come up with a plan. So Mr. Uddersworth called Mr. Beardsmore, and between the two of them, they came up with a cow-goat communication protocol, which they presented proudly to Old MacDonald, along with a nice big bill which Old MacDonald somewhat grudgingly paid. After all, there was no one else who could apply the proprietary skills of Uddersworth and Beardsmore, and the last thing Old MacDonald wanted to do was to sour the relationship and cut himself off from being to avail of their boutique services in the future. There was also a rather irritating matter of contracts that he had signed many years previously when these guys were the only ones, or the cheapest ones, in the business. Ah, the good old days. But he wasn't sure he was getting great value for money. So that was maybe a bit better. The sheep could talk to the goats, as could the cows, but the cows couldn't really talk to the sheep except through the goats, and there was still a lot of here a moo, there a ba, everywhere a moo, ba, boo, ba, and the field was getting more and more hectic every day. And so it went on. Mr. Waddlesbury was paid to try and sort out a new duck-cow issue with minimal success and that tied things up for weeks. Lady Fluffington Smythe insisted that she had to handle the cat-dog conundrum and that was actually something of a triumph. So credit where credit is due. Old MacDonald himself tried to make an arrangement between the horse and the sheep which took up rather a lot of his time and he wasn't too sure if he should be doing that sort of thing. But anyway, it didn't work. And so it went on, the grazing and the feeding, the translating and the mucking and the transporting and the cleaning and the milking and everything else weren't getting any simpler. Old MacDonald took off his cap and wiped his sleeve across his sweaty brow and wondered what would become of his lovely farm. He was spending a lot of money with little to show for it and the animals weren't happy. He wasn't happy and his customers at the cooperative and the farm shop were getting cheesed off too. The future was not looking rosy. One day, while he was frantically running around the yard chasing a goose, yes he did have geese, uh, that had run off in horror from its chicken orientation workshop or something, a gentleman in a very large shiny car pulled through the gate. Good morning to you, fine sir, effused the suited chap as he stepped out of the car, ensuring he didn't get his equally shiny shoes soiled. I am here from Tecomoto Systems Incorporated. You will have heard of us. We built your TV and your fridge and your exercise bike. So it should be obvious to you that we know a great deal about running a farm. Old MacDonald mopped his brow. Well, if you say so. Yes, indeed. My name is Maximilian Fitzperfect, 
and our analysis tells us that you have a problem. Our services are exactly what you need and will allow your farm business to rake in a fortune. Old MacDonald looked at the car, the suit, the shoes and the shiny, shiny business card that Fitzperfect was holding out to him and was impressed. So what is it I need? Fitzperfect smiled a wide smile revealing gleaming row of pearly white teeth. You need, my dear sir, a sheep, a goat, a dog, a cat, a cow, a duck, a hen, a horse, a beast. Well, a, a flock of them. We at Tecomoto have been analysing your diverse farm system, and while you undoubtedly have fine examples of the very best of each breed, their communication is letting you down. Your business down, and... The smile instantly converted to something altogether more mournful, at a speed which made the transition look as if Fitzperfect had worked on it quite a bit. It's letting your customers down. So old MacDonald had waves of guilt as well as sweat washing across his fevered brow now, and he wasn't quite sure his sleeve could cope with all this. But I've never heard of a sheep, a goat, a dog, a cat, a cow, a duck, a hen, a horse, a beast. What is it? Fitzperfect did an almost imperceptible eye roll. Plausibly deniable, anyway. You can get rid of all your other animals. No more moo moo, ba ba, woof woof, meow meow, cluck cluck, here, there and everywhere. The sheep, a goat, a dog, a cat, a cow, a duck, a hen, a horse, a beast, or what we at Tecomoto like to call the ex-beast, makes a pleasing hum and does the job of every one of the animals on the farm, so you don't end up with all this confusion. In fact, even the government are demanding that all farmers adopt this approach or they'll cut off your... Old MacDonald crossed his legs. Subsidies! Continued Fitzperfect after the briefest of pauses. It's all fine. We worked this all out. Sign here. Old MacDonald had not got to where he was today by simply signing here. He had a couple of questions. What about the pigs and the geese and the other critters, he asked. Oh, Tecomoto Systems Incorporated have the most skilled genetic engineers on the planet, smiled Fitzperfect. We can design and splice the relevant DNA into the X-Beast genome and get it performing all the functions of those obsolete animals you keep around this place, and it'll be a special bespoke ex-beast, uniquely crafted to reflect your needs, your values, and those of your loyal customers. He presented old MacDonald with a large glossy brochure showing smiling farmers with fists full of tenors and fields full of ex-beasts. Is Farmer Jones doing anything similar to this? Old MacDonald raised his, his good eyebrow. The smile got wider. Ah, yeah, well he, well, he will when he sees what you're doing. You're a leader, a trendsetter. Where you go, others will follow. He'd be crazy not to. Well, here's what happened. Old MacDonald mar mortgaged half the farm to pay a hugely expensive, or to, pay, to buy a hugely expensive flock of ex-beasts. It turned out they were too unwieldy to do most of the jobs they needed to do. They needed an inordinate amount of feed. They were too big to get through the cat flap, too slow to chase the other ex-beasts doing sheepy things, not inclined to be rounded up by other ex-beasts. They didn't lay very good eggs and their manure wasn't particularly compostable. And the pleasing hum was an intensely irritating assault of noise pollution. What's more, the costs kept skyrocketing and the farm business was coming perilously close to a complete failure. In desperation, old MacDonald pulled the plug on the whole operation. But Fitzperfect pointed to the line in the contract that said he still had to be paid, regardless of whether the ex-beasts actually performed according to the glossy brochure or not. Despondent, old MacDonald slumped in his last remaining straw bale, sighed a deep sigh. <sighs> Billy, the farmhand, walked across the yard and sat down beside him. Old MacDonald didn't say a word. Billy cleared his throat. No response. He cleared it again. <clears throat> and this time got a twitch of old MacDonald's good eyebrow. I have an idea, said Billy. I've been working with you for a while and I've seen how all the previous animals work. There are things they can do and things they can't do, but sometimes what they can do, they do well, precisely because they can't do something else. The eyebrow went up a little more. Billy continued. What if all this time we've been trying to develop an ex-beast, when in fact what we need is a way of connecting together all the animals of the farm to make the various operations run smoothly. Old MacDonald sighed another sigh, this one coated with pity for the naivety of youth. But we tried the sheep whisperer, the goat whisperer and all the other whisperers and that just turned into an expensive waste of time. They just can't all talk to each other, it leads to chaos. Well, replied Billy, maybe we don't need them all to talk to each other, sheep to goats, goats to ducks, ducks to cats and so forth. All that does is introduce too many translation problems. If we have 10 species on the farm, that means each needs to speak to 9 others. That's 90 different translation problems. What if we study the animals, find out their languages, build a common data layer yeah, that their languages can map onto? Then we can analyse what's happening on the farm, find the right balance and get all the animals to do what we need them to do. 
But I've been trying to do that, said old MacDonald with yet another sigh. There's still lots of jobs that I just can't do with these animals. Sure, said Billy, well you need to get a tractor to do the heavy lifting. But we need to treat the farm as a system, not a structure. It's not easy, but it's easier than continuing to get it wrong and keep losing loads of money for rubbish outcomes. And what's more, we can work with Farmer Jones and Farmer Bloggs and Farmer Baggins, wherever they are, and share our experience and learn from each other. Old MacDonald was intrigued, but not yet sold on this idea. Their farms are very different from mine. Mine is special. We are on this very specific side of the valley, and we're 300 metres from the main road. Farmer Jones is across the valley, and at least 350 metres from the road. Now it was the turn of Billy's good eyebrow to go up. Well, over the next few years, Billy and Old MacDonald worked together to introduce a farm data system based on open standards that allowed them to manage what was happening on the farm and to allow the animals to be true to their nature but to communicate effectively. They found that the relationships between the different animals were indeed crucial, but if they could get them all working together with judicious use of the new tractor, they could get results. Productivity improved, the health and well-being of the animals improved, the products to market improved, as did the cash flow and the customer satisfaction. Old MacDonald adopted Billy as his son and heir, and everyone lived happily ever after, with a moo moo here, a ba ba there, a quack quack here, there, a cluck, and everywhere else, and where appropriate, a chug chug. The end. <laughs>